so goes on. So you, you can play a lot of time doing always new and new things. One of the first ideas that Nick given to me, one of the first statements he'd made about the, the project and about the idea behind it was that we would find the similarities in looking for the differences and differences in looking for the similarities. And I think this, uh, this, rang, out, <coughs> this rang out all through the two weeks. Um, with constantly discovering that, ah, we do this the, the same way or we do this a different way. And therefore learning learning a lot about each other's music. In the process of doing rehearsals, uh, where after we gave a seminar for the guys and uh, they in return did uh, the same for us, and we demonstrated basically what we do. so well in such a short space of time. We had uh, less than two weeks, we had 12 days um, in which we did uh, all the rehearsals. Styles, not only of music in general, traditional music, different, very many different. If you hear music from uh, the islands, it has nothing to do with music from northern Greece, nothing at all. You can probably could be from another country. So, we, uh, mostly in northern Greece, we have. Uh, Many Slavic uh, population, Pontiac people, uh, Tiana. Turkish Yes, many, also many gypsies, uh, Rome, that uh, used also most of the time to be musicians, so they have influenced a lot 
the music. Uh, we can say that uh, the islands have a kind of steel that is like unit. When Bartok spoke about the organic nature of traditional music, he drew the analogy uh, that the music is like leaves on a tree. And that's true both microcosmically and macrocosmically. In the micro form, if you look at traditional music from many different parts of the world, the compositions, the songs are constructed using small cell-like uh, forms, small musical cells, um, which resemble each other um, very closely, but develop through a system of micro variation. Uh, and this is exactly the same way the leaves on a tree resemble one another. They're obviously formed from one primary source. They're obviously like this particular type of leaf, but no two leaves are exactly the same. And when you stand back, they look like one tree. Um, in a macrocosmic form, these, um, this kind of idea, way of thinking about music can be applied to geographical regions as well, styles of music, um, that each have characteristic cells, uh, characteristic leaves that then form the, that tree. Um, nowadays, the world is really listening to the whole world's music and people all over the world are listening to everything so it's like we're now um, we're now looking at the whole forest so well and the, the musicians that we've done together uh, just devoured uh, the learning process and we ended up learning most of each other's uh, sets and then we picked pieces from this uh, we actually had a choice of the pieces we could play together in the end so we ended up playing most of the concerts together as a, as a whole ensemble and uh, in one evening we had played one piece, each separate group, just to give a basic idea of what the original uh, flavours, the original ingredients were. It's not divided yeah. because of the scales of the use. Okay, the can, I, can I just divided. play? Oh, sorry. Can I just play them one by one? Yeah, yeah. But no, no, you. <laughs> <laughs> Later, 
depends of the of the makam which one mm. you use. The one of the most beautiful moments of this project for me was when we did the the circle, um, the makam circle, and um, Nikos and uh, and Alexandros had been explaining for a couple of hours about the theories behind the makams and uh, the structures of the makams and the way to improvise within the makam. Um, and at the conclusion of this we went in a circle and we performed improvisations. So we can play the first phrase, every, uh, we make a circle of the first phrase, one after the other, okay? The moment for me that, that really kind of drove home the, the vital aspects of the project were listening to Agent um, playing his, his Macam, his, his improvisation, uh, and the, you know, the, the sound of, of the kind of, of the Irish music coming out in his fiddle, and the, and, but the Macam that he was playing, you know, just the, this mixture of elements really, um, really struck a chord with me then. That was a really beautiful moment.
saxophone, trombone, uh, cello, contrabass, two violin, drums, percussion, accordion, lafta, nay, lira, saz, vocals. Uh, what happens? <laughs> Yeah. 
for the last few years of studying this music, I've been, I've been always thinking in the back of my mind that this music can be by, combined with other types of music. So anyway, a, a year passed by, hundred, hundreds of phone calls, dozens of emails, sending of uh, CDs to each other, sending of notation to each other. Uh, a year later, we find ourselves in Dublin, in the rain, in uh, June, um, taking part in the probably the most interesting project that I've taken part. In. This whole project culminated with one of the best gigs that I've ever been involved with, and you can, for me, I gauge a successful concert by the ease with which the music just comes out of the band, and that can happen after a day of rehearsal or a year's rehearsal, and it's really just a mark of whether the elements, the components have fused well enough for the success of the music. Um, I'm, I'm Ole. Pete. Adrian. Alex and Rose. Nick. Paul. Maria. Dave. <laughs> Alexis. Francesco. Paul. Nick. Again, again, the two of us.